I am looking through the list and there's some names I'm not as familiar with. So um, is there anyone here who is not a Spanish speaker? If you could just type in the chat, you know, I, I'm English only or something like that. that would right, help. comfort zone, English, Spanish. I'm good either way. Like I said, the first session I leaned more on, um, okay. <laughs> I leaned more on. <laughs> I think we have our answer, yeah. We have our answer. Consensus is English. It is bueno. But I am have to, you know, I have to throw in my Spanish words in there sometimes. Y cualquier clarification que necesiten en lo que es the phonics o la fonética en español, por favor, because that is where the rubber hits the road with maravillas. That being said, welcome, bienvenidos one more time to this maravillas informational session. My name is Lisette Reed. I will be leading this off for you today. Uh, what you're seeing here are the teacher guides or las guías del maestro for Maravillas 2020. I am going to kind of start there. Um, that is where we're going to launch our time together today. So in those guías de maestro, or those teacher guides, you're going to see the unit structure. And those unit structures are as follows for second through fifth grade. In second through fifth grade, the unit structure is there are six units, seis unidades. So within each of those six units, you're gonna find seis semanas or six weeks of instruction per unit embedded in unit one, week one is something called un buen comienzo or a start smart, just like you have in Wonders. Weeks one through five, in that unit, you're going to find all of the new instruction or toda la nueva instrucción is going to be found in that weeks one to five. In week six, we, we hold that week uh, or we uh, utilize purpose for that week six is for review, extension, and assess opportunities. So repaso, ampliar y evaluar what we have taught the students throughout the, the first five weeks. And rest assured, you're going to see that with, with Maravillas 2020, all of this is already embedded and curated for you in a super duper handy consumable called Mi Libro de Lectura y Escritura. So my reading, writing uh, companion in Wonders, you'll see that in Maravillas as well. So all of this is going to be um, uh, kind of put together for you in that consumable that we're gonna get to in just a bit. So start smart in grades two through five. Un buen comienzo. What is the purpose to start smart? Just like it is in Wonders, right? Uh, establishing social emotional learning skill and how those, how the social emotional learning skills are going to be uh, taught. What are the tools that you'll be utilizing in order to engage students in that pro-social emotional behavior? We're also going to launch habits of learning. These habits of learning are going to come through these I statements. So every week for, I'm sorry, every unit, you're going to have an I statement that you're going to revisit throughout the unit that is going to establish good habits of learning that's going to help students succeed, not only in school, but throughout life. During Start Smart, you're also going to establish rutinas instruccionales. So instructional routines that you're going to be utilizing not only uh, during Start Smart, but throughout the entire school year. So this week of Start Smart, because it's one week in uh, grades two through five, you're going to be launching, facilitating, and kind of getting familiarized with the instructional routines or las rutinas instruccionales uh, that you will be utilizing throughout the year. Classroom culture. So establishing positive classroom cultures are gonna, is going to come through we statements. So you're going to have a we statement that's going to be launched at a unit basis that you're going to be revisiting throughout that unit that's really going to help you facilitate not only a positive classroom culture, but that can facilitate those habits of learning that we're talking about. So during this first week of Start Smart, we're going to get familiarized with all of this. How does it look like in Maravillas? And how are we going to us become familiar with those and get the students familiar with the fact that this is these are going to be recurring features uh, throughout the instruction. So here is the spread of un buen comienzo that you're going to find in your teacher editions. Remember, un buen comienzo is what you're going to do during unit one, week one. So this spread is going to kind of showcase for you, right, those social emotional skills in second through fifth grade. How are those, uh, why is, is it important and how in Maravillas are those um, social emotional skills 
uh, developed? How are those social emotional skills established? And you're seeing here, it's gonna be through a weekly concept as well as an essential question, really giving the students an opportunity to talk about those collaboratively and have those meaningful learning opportunities within those social emotional skills. Here you're seeing those cla that classroom culture, how are we establishing those? Of course, why is it important to establish a positive classroom culture so that students are respectful for one another and can uh, uh, cultivate a good learning environment? And how do we do it within Maravillas? Uh, well, we're doing it through, like I said, those we statements that are part of that unit starter and that you could post in your classroom or even provide even a, a slide in that e-presentation that we're providing for you because you could bring in uh, things to customize those e-presentations. Habits of learning, like I said, is going to come through an I statement. So you're going to launch that I statement at the beginning of each unit, and then you're going to revisit those I statements as you really support and establish good habits of learning throughout your Maravillas instruction. Routines, super importante, como dicen los cubanos en la Florida. Super importante are las rutinas de instrucción. So you have instructional routines and wonders. Obviously, the ones in Maravillas are going to differ a little bit, but some of them are, you're going to find some commonalities like collaborative conversation, close reading vocabulary. All of those are going to have some commonality between Wonders and Maravillas. Here, we're explaining the importance of the why of routine to establish that consistency in the way that we provide that instruction, the expectation of the students as we provide and, and we facilitate those instructional routines and how are they addressed in Reading Wonders. So brand new to you guys is something called El Apendices para Maravillas. So in Wonders, you have an instructional routines handbook that houses all of the instructional routines and wonders. We've added un apendices or a Maravillas appendix that will show you or script out or flesh out a little bit more the rutinas de enseñanza o de instruccional in maravillas. So you're going to have those in the back of the instructional routines handbook. That appendix is really well, going to be very important to you. And we've also added uh, modeled classroom videos for maravillas in your professional learning environment on your digital dashboard. And I'll show you that when we go digital. So this is really going to show you, it's going to showcase for you um, how you are, you know, like I say, pictures is worth a thousand words. Well, a video is worth a million words. What does this look like in a classroom as we're uh, kind of interacting with students and teaching them uh, these uh, instructional routines in Maravillas? Rubber hits the road with Maravillas and Wonders. Obviously, the biggest differentiator between Wonders and Maravillas is la fonética, right? We're teaching how to read Spanish very differently than how we would teach how to read English, right? So a lot of the videos are um, showcasing those uh, phoneticas or those instructional routines that are pertaining to the development and um, the instruction of learning how to read in Spanish. In grades two through five, very like wonders, Maravillas is structured in the same way. So you're going to have within those six weeks of instruction, weeks one and two is going to be for that genre study one. Weeks three and four are going to be for your genre study two. Week five is going to be your genre study three. And like we had spoken already, week six is going to be dedicated to review, extend, and assess opportunities that are already built into your reading, writing companion or mi libro de lectura and escritura, which we're going to uh, hop into in a second here. In your teacher edition, we've added a couple of new uh, front matter pages. This is one of them. This is a weekly outcomes page for students, kind of letting you know, helping you keep the edit in mind, what are the skills that are being addressed during that week of instruction, and more importantly, what are the skills that are going to be tested in the Maravillas assessment at the end of those two weeks. So we're putting a check mark next to those so that when you're planning, you're gonna kind of plan with the end in mind. A couple of other uh, layout, lays, uh, layout pages that you're going to see are gonna be an overview, a literature overview page. Uh, you're going to see a writing overview page. All of this is really gonna give you a bird's eye view 
of what that instruction is going to look like, um, what, is, what is the tying feature, which is going to be that concept or that essential question that's going to kind of tie it all together. Rest assured that we have made modifications to the teacher and the student dashboard. So um, everything that you're going to need to teach Maravillas, both in print or digital, has already been uh, put together for you. You could launch that e-presentation on a daily basis and you're be, you'll be able to teach Maravillas digitally. So e, uh, a, what I'm going to call an electronic presentation that has been pre-done for you that is also customizable. You will have um, customizable lesson plans. So sus planes de enseñanza are all done for you and customizable. Your standards at point of use, uh, if you need that as well. Printable resources or your archivos para imprimir semanales. So your printable resources are gonna be there. That means that is that your, turn, uh, your um, uh, practice book We've already pulled out the pages that correlate to that week's or that genre worth of instruction. Weekly customizable parent letters, as well as games to assign and your online assessment center. So all of, the, all of your assessments have been digitized in order to facilitate students taking those assessments digitally. I'm gonna stop here. If you guys came to me this morning with any questions or if you have any questions on all of the front loading that I've done before we get into this instructional walkthrough of a lesson, put it in the chat box if you're comfortable with that or you could unmute yourself and answer any uh, pending questions that you, will have, that you have at this point for either me uh, or Jeremy. All right, did you find the thumbs up? So it's those participant options down here. If you give me a thumbs up, then I know that you guys are good. You are ready to go and you are with me. So find that participant option on that bottom um, little bar if you hover kind of towards the bottom of your screen. If you're with me, click yes. If you're not, click no. And we'll take a look at where you are. Yay. Three people found it out of 24. Hey, four. I'm gonna utilize this to kind of take the temperature as we move forward. It's a very quick way, once you guys know where that checkbox is, to kind of, I could gauge whether we're on the, we're on the right path, good, um, uh, good clip here as we move forward. So, Four out of 24 found the checkbox. Come on, guys. Busquen, aquí abajo. Participant options. If you hover over that, you're gonna see that yes box. Yay. Te voy a dar tiempo, un poquito de tiempo para encontrarlo. Porque así se, uy, ya sí, ahora sí. Ahora sí lo encontraron, muy bien. Muy bien. All right, we're getting there. We are getting there. Thank you so much. Very quick, a little interactive way to kind of, for me to kind of take the temperature and know that you are with me and that uh, we could continue to chug along. So in segundo grado, because I know I'm talking to uh, some second and some third grade teachers, in segundo grado, uh, la fonética, or a, lo que le decimos el taller de palabras, or your word work, is still very important as we're still in the, in the tail end of that phonics continuum. So just know that from reconocimiento fonológico or your phonological awareness to fonética, everything that you're going to need to teach and to continue to teach that phonics instruction is gonna be there for you. It's gonna also follow that model of the release of responsibility. You're gonna model first, practice, guided practice, and then practice all of the resources that you're going to need in order to teach your phonological awareness in your, in your phonics are also gonna be particular to maravillas versus the ones that you use and wonder. So, las fotos, las tarjetas de foto, los carteles de enseñanza, obviously, uh, Spanish, as we were saying, the rubber hits the road is the teaching of how to, uh, how to read in Spanish. And we're doing that with syllabas versus onset and rhyme. 
So here you're seeing some carteles de enseñanza o de fonética that you're going to be using that are part of that electronic presentation, but are also part of a teacher resource that you could download in its entirety. Additionally, you have tarjetas armapalabras or your word building cards. These word building cards are going to give you and your students an opportunity to take the, the building of those syllabas from the concrete to the abstract. So giving the students an opportunity to build words physically is, a, is one of the most um, effective strategies in teaching students uh, how to blend sounds, how to combine syllabas in our case, right? Uh, super, super important. You have this in its entirety. You could certainly, in a digital environment, assign these tarjetas alma palabras to your students so they could download them at home and have these um, to utilize. So a lot of uh, flexibility in how uh, you would continue to utilize this. La ortografía, claro que las palabras de ortografía or your spelling words are always going to be in correlation and in connection to la fonética and what you've taught. Le estábamos enseñando las sílabas de didado du. So here in la ortografía, claro que la lista or the, uh, the spelling words are going to be in line to reinforce that phonics instruction through your spelling or through, through la ortografía. Palabras de uso frecuente también siguen en segundo grado. So we're continuing with high frequency words. In second grade, you will have a high frequency word set uh, that you will get in print. There's going to be three words to each sheet. You kind of tear those apart in a classroom environment. You'll have them, but you'll also have in a digital environment, Palabras de uso frecuente, games, so that you could introduce these words to the students, play games to engage them, and then those are the same games that the students are going to have at home to continue to practice and engage with these palabras de uso uh, frecuente or your high frequency words. Here are some of the recursos de maestro that the second grade teachers are going to have in order to teach uh, reconocimiento fonológico and your uh, fonética. So, las tarjetas de foto, diferente a las que tienen de Wonders, different from the Wonders, sound spelling cards, um, or las tarjetas de fonética, claro, totalmente diferente a lo que tienen en Wonders, because these sound spelling cards obviously have las sílabas that you're going to use in order to teach uh, to read Spanish. The back is going to give you a lot of support with teaching la fonética, as well as uh, a list of vocabulary words for you to utilize when you're doing that auditory or that um, practice out loud with the students. Um, you have some vocabulario para uh, práctica oral and práctica también imprimida. Tarjetas de vocabulario visual. Can't even stress how important this is when, uh, when you're dealing with second language learners or when you're continuing the literacy of that native language in Spanish. So here you have a visual of that vocabulary. Uh, pictures worth a thousand words in a print environment. If we were back at, at school, you would have these posted throughout the week. You would have your uh, las tarjetas de fonética también posted throughout the week. The, las tarjetas de foto to, uh, posted throughout the week. Your tarjetas de palabras frecuente. So all of these obviously is something that we're going to have to do a little work around in a virtual environment. All of these are assignable to your students to access at home as well. Las tarjetas de alma palabra that we were talking about here, um, obviously they are digital only. So if it's in the classroom, what I would suggest to you as teachers, they come, for example, si es la sílaba um, a la or ja here like in Javi, um, you have la sílaba in small little cards, about six of them to a sheet. So you would print those out, cut those out, right? Put them in Ziploc bags. As you continue to build that phonics instruction, the students would add to that Ziploc bag el sonido o la sílaba that you were teaching for that week. So, tarjeta se llama palabra. I can't even stress enough the importance of that. Cuaderno de práctica. So this comes, this is your practice book. This will uh, facilitate additional practice from phonological awareness to, phoneme, uh, to phonics, to spelling, to handwriting, high frequency words, gramática, vocabulario. Um, uh, cuentos para llevar a la casa, so take home stories that are in line with the in phonics instruction for that week. You will also have uh, prácticas para las destrezas fundamentales, EC, if you want additional practice with calligrafía, you also have a downloadable resource that you'll be able to utilize. So 
uh, second grade, your cuaderno de práctica is going to look like this. Third uh, grade, yours is going to look a little different, and I'm going to get to that in a second. In second grade, you also have uh, decodable readers. These decodable readers are per unit. So you have six titles, six copies of these decodable readers. And in these decodable readers, you're going to find um, uh, cuentos descomificables that's going to allow students to practice that phonics uh, skill within connected text. You'll find two for each uh, phonics skill. One's going to be fiction and one's going to be nonfiction. But again, it's going to, its main purpose is to practice that phonics skill within connected text. Everything that the students are going to read or that you read aloud to the student is going to have instruction to follow this path. Leer, releer, y integrar. So read, reread, and integrate, just like in Wonders. First time we read it, for what the author said, little understanding of that text. The second time we reread it, or the, sec or the, time, the next time we, we read it and we reread it, it's for author's craft, structure. What did the author use to help us understand that text a little better? And then ultimately, the application or the transference of that new idea from all the other texts that we've read into something new, and it's gonna be a, a multimedia piece. And we're gonna take a look at that when I take you through that instructional walkthrough. So, mi libro de lectura y escritura in second grade unitized. So there's six units of instruction in second grade. You'll have uh, one reading, writing, companion, or mi libro de lectura y escritura for each unit of instruction in second grade. Third, fourth, and fifth grade, two units of instruction per mi libro de lectura y escritura. All the texts that the students are going to need to, that you're going to need to teach and model from are going to be there. And you're going to find a total integration of reading and writing in these mi libro de lectura y escritura. Uh, consumable for the life of the adoption. That means that every year moving forward throughout the adoption, we will replenish these uh, mi libro de lectura de escritura. So we really, really want the students to um, annotate, circle, highlight, answer those text-dependent questions right into these like, uh, mi libro de lectura de escritura. All of these books, including this one and the anthology or the texto principal that we'll be talking about in a second, they're all digitized. And not digitized meaning a PDF. They are actually digitized so that students could write in them audio support, uh, answer questions right on their digitized version, and you'll have access to all of their digital version, uh, of their digital version of this Mi Libro de Lectura en Escritura. So rest assured that if you're face-to-face, -face, you'll have these in print. If you're in a digital or virtual environment, you'll still be able to utilize these uh, Mi Libro de Lectura en Escritura in a very virtual uh, environment. We're going to start here because this is where the lesson starts in Mi Libro de Lectura and Escritura. We're going to start with un coméntalo, which is a talk about it, con una pregunta esencial, which is your essential question. Y esta pregunta es, ¿qué ayuda a un animar a subsistir? Well, very important, right? Pero we have to give the students a little bit of vocabulary, a little background knowledge. So there's going to be a building knowledge video o un video para ayudar a los estudiantes a desarrollar un poquito el concepto semanal de lo que es adaptaciones. So let's take a look at this building. Ahora sí van a tener un poquito más de vocabulario para poder completar this concept web. So we've given them a little bit of flavor, we've given them a little bit of concept, vocabulary for them to attempt 
this concept web, which is all about, now we're gonna talk about chameleons and what do they do to be able to survive? What adaptations do they have to help them survive? The connection is either gonna be to science or social studies. This lesson that I'm gonna take you through is gonna be obviously uh, science. La lectura compartida, this is uh, that shared read that you're gonna find in mi libro de lectura en escritura. And as I said, everything is digitized and it's not just a consumable, this is not a practice book. This is guided instruction. ¿Te acuerdas que le hablé de leer y releer? Well, you see the side margins of this reading, writing companion or le, mi, mi libro de lectura en escritura. We're gonna give you that guidance on what the students are doing the first time they read it. What are they doing the second time they read portions or reread portions of that text. You're seeing here on the side margin, all of this is digitized and I'm gonna show you when we go digital, how the students can answer these questions digitally or they can uh, answer them in print. And there is actual a notebook, a digitized notebook that the students can actually answer these questions in print or digital as well. So here you're seeing multiple pages of that shared read, but I want you to note to notice is the guided instruction, all right? La guía de la instrucción es lo que van a encontrar a los lados. La primera vez que leemos, ¿qué estamos haciendo? Vamos, vamos a buscar las fotos y las leyendas Subrayen, busquen los detalles en ese texto. That's going to help me understand that text. Los profijos, right? That vocabulary strategy. Hacer un resumen de porciones del texto. Encabezado, those headings. How are those headings helping me? What, is, what was that main idea? Lo, la idea principal y esos detalles, right? ¿Cómo podemos hacer inferencias sobre ya lo que hemos leído, right? So that first time I read it, that guidance is there. Second time, right? That reread or releer es para la técnica que usó ese actor, ese autor para ayudarme a mí a entender ese texto. So here you're seeing those releer activities that are right in the side margin, right? The vocabulary that the author used to help me understand the photographs, the captions that they help me understand, the explanation of how one adaptation helps an animal, but hurts another one survives. So the relayed portion is getting that deeper understanding of that text as we reread. Vocabulary and context, right? Vocabulario, super importante. Parte de lo, las páginas que están en mi libro de lectura y escritura, claro, en la parte de releer. So el vocabulario, esto es un poquito diferente. El vocabulario, you don't teach it ahead of time. You let the, the students encounter that vocabulary within context. And then you'll have this vocabulary page to come and shore up that instruction. The definition, so as you see here, this is the vocabulary routine. We're gonna define example as, le damos una definición, un ejemplo, y le hacemos una pregunta. La definición no la ven aquí. La definición está en su guía de maestro. Bajo vocabulario, palabras. En texto le vamos a dar la definición. So there's where you're gonna find the, the definition of these vocabulary words. Uh, point here is for students to gain an understanding of this vocabulary within context, not in isolation. They're going to find this text in every single piece of text that they're going to read throughout the week in Maravillas. Vocabulary strategy, right? Los profijos, you saw in the uh, read portion, we were asking them to find and kind of notice that in, that in the text. Here is that um, is explicit vocabulary strategy. What else are you going to find in mi libro de lectura en escritura? You're going to find three mini lessons o tres mini lecciones. Una es de la estrategia de comprensión o una comprehension strategy. In this case, is resumir or summarize. Um, you're also going to find either a literary element or a text feature. Porque este texto es expositivo, es un, un text feature. Quiere decir que vamos a, a hablar de la fo las fotos, las, le las leyendas y las encabezadas. So the photographs, captions, and the headings, and how that helps me understand the text. So too many lessons here, comprehension strategy, a literary element or a text feature, and the third one that you're going to find during the rereading es una de destreza de comprensión or your comprehension skill. In this instance, the comprehension skill is idea principal y detalles claves, main idea and key details. So all, the, all the lessons here are formulated in the gradual release of responsibility. 
So this first part is you teaching the students what is una idea principal y qué es un detalle clave. Second part is in the we do is you teaching the students, hey, what fueron esos detalles clave que me llegaron a la idea principal? So what were those key details that led me to that main idea? Y finalmente es tu turno. So ahora le pedimos a los estudiantes que lean otra porción, that they read another portion of that, um, of that shared read, animal adaptations, in order to fill out their own graphic organizer that's already in the reading, writing companion or el, mi libro de lectura y escritura. At this point, they're going to apply what you've taught and modeled for them. And then we're going to take that graphic organizer and those notes from the graphic organizer in order to answer a text dependent question about the work that we've been doing. So really giving a purpose to those graphic organizers and taking those notes as we're taking that information to writing. Aquí you also are going to see enlace eh, grammatical. So uh, your grammar uh, of how you would infuse grammar instruction into this response as well as acuerdo. So these are sentence starters that are going to help your students uh, even start a response to that, uh, that little uh, prompt as it relates to that graphic organizer. So a lot of built-in support, mucho, tiene mucho soporte para los estudiantes, mucho apoyo para los estudiantes en, toda, en todos los puntos de uh, la instrucción. Talking about comprehension skill, this is new to Wonders 2020. Uh, apart from the regular games that the students are gonna have on a weekly basis, that are in line to the skill, something new to Wonders 2020 are what we call data collection games. These data collection games are uh, kind of denoted by this little rainbow circle. So that's how you're going to know this game is different from all the other games. This game is going to collect data. It's going to collect data in response to the comprehension skill uh, and the vocabulary strategy for that week. If you assign these data collecting games to the students, they pour into something called the data dashboard. This data dashboard is real-time data. It's going to give you data on how the students are doing uh, individually per student, how your class is doing uh, with the skills that were taught that week. So it's not only going to tell you uh, and, and group the students for you, it's also going to give you suggestions on uh, what you can do as reteaching opportunities. So these uh, links right here, these blue links, they're hyper linked to these tier two intervention guides. So estos, uh, estas guías de intervención le van a dar oportunidad para uh, volver a enseñar esas lecciones que todavía los estudiantes están teniendo un poquito de trabajo. And there's also built-in enrichment activities as you click into those hyper uh, links. Not only are those tier two intervention guys linked in the data dashboard, you also have them in their entirety on your teacher dashboard. So aquí ven eh, comprensión, escritura y gramática, fluidez, fonética, vocabulario. So if you need reteaching opportunities and reteaching lessons, you'll have these in your teacher environment for the complete download. So now we're going to go from mi libro de lectura y escritura, which we were doing all that teaching and modeling from, to el texto principal or the anchor text that are going to be housed in your uh, anchor textbook or your literature anthology. This is a hard covered book where the students are going to be able to apply and practice what you taught and you model. ¿Qué enseñamos y practicamos? ¿Qué modelamos y enseñamos en el libro de lectura y escritura? Well, think about it. Summarization, main idea and key details, text features, all of those things that we taught and modeled in, in Mi Libro de Lectura y Escritura, the students are now going to have an extended piece of text to be able to uh, practice and apply from. What is el texto principal que sigue este, este género de estudio que I'm kind of showcasing for you as I take you through this lesson? Well, it's all about arañas. So the arañas also has some adaptations that they have developed in order to sostener. Everything, like I said, in el libro de lectura y escritura is digitized. Well, so is this texto principal. We're gonna talk, we're gonna comentar, we're going to uh, cite text evidence, o cita la evidencia, y después vamos a escribir. Pero primero, vamos a oír parte del texto 
para poder completar este, graf, este organizador gráfico. Bueno, if that didn't paint a picture in your mind of the adaptations that the spider has in order to be able to eat its prey, I don't know what does. So here, what we're asking the students to do is we're pulling out las palabras que lo dejan visualizar como esa araña come uh, its prey, right? So we're listening to it. In this instance, I kind of showcase for you that it doesn't necessarily always have to be a reread. Sometimes it could be just like, hey, listen to this portion of the text and together let's pull out the words that are really painting a picture in our mind on how this spider eats its prey. Aquí tienen también in, the, in that um, texto principal or that anthology, tienen también lo que le decimos una lectura compartida or a paired selection. The paired selection is always, even though you're seeing here, it is Anansi y los Pajaro, which is a fable, it is also in correlation to the concept. I guarantee you that Anansi came up with some sort of adaptation in order to escape from its prey. So aquí tienen an excerpt. So tienen un pedacito de esa lectura compartida or that shared read that you're going to find in its entirety. In the anthology, you're going to have a little excerpt in the um en la lectura, en el libro de lectura uh, y escritura. Aquí bien también que los párrafos lo, lo hemos, eh, we've have uh, numbered the paragraphs in order to aid the students quickly in being able to find that text evidence. So we've read, we've reread the shared reading and the anthology. Now it's time to make connections or integrate. Here you're seeing, now the students are gonna be asked to, hey, Let's observe the photographs and the captions. And let's talk about this uh, seahorse dragon. Um, let's cite text evidence based on um, not only what we're seeing here, but uh, from other, the other texts that we have read throughout the week that helps us understand what an animal uses to survive. Y aquí tenemos la descripción o la uh, capción, right? The caption for that, la leyenda for this particular photograph that helps us understand, hey, they, they have developed some adaptations to help them survive. Aquí Acuérdate is gonna have those sentence starters to help the students if they need a little uh, launching point for their writing. Vamos a hacer pausa porque Lice tiene que tomar un poquito de agua. I'm gonna take a little water. So we're gonna do a little pausa and when we come back, take this a moment, and no es una pausa comercial, caballero, una más que una pausa, no? Cinco minutos, reflejar, absorber todo lo que hemos hablado hasta este momento. So, talk, stop, reflect, absorb. Um, put your questions in the chat box because when I come back, we're going to come back and we're going to launch with a Q&A, a question and answer survey before I take you to writing language arts, assessment, small group instruction, and the digital. So, let's take a five-minute break. It is... Uh, 27 past the hour. So I'll see you guys back at 32 past the hour. Thank you.
Pues hola, estamos de nuevo. Tenemos unas cuantas preguntas. I think Jeremy, that question is more to you. I don't know if you want to address the group, but I, I have a feeling that that is something that is on everybody's mind. So if you want to address that so that everybody could hear. I'm sorry, which, which question are you referring to? Uh, the one about the time allotment for Spanish versus English. Yeah, um, so I did just put something in chat that um, we're, we're going to be as flexible as we can. And we know that this year is weird for everybody. Uh, we are recommending that we do have uh, language arts time divided across both languages uh, because of our much smaller footprint of, of time for Spanish um, this year, as well as for English. Uh, this is something that's an ongoing discussion with principals and certainly with grade level teams, but because we do have these resources, um, you know, we do recommend that we look for ways to use them. Additionally, we will have in third grade resources for math and Spanish, but not for content in Spanish uh, that the, the division's creating. Uh, but in fourth grade, we'll have resources for content in Spanish and not in math that the division's creating. So we're, we're trying to do what we can to make uh, people's work easier um, and to, to not have each school recreating materials or creating materials. That's where we are currently. All right, thank you so much for that clarification. Without a doubt, valid, right? Uh, concern as we're uh, toggling into a very uncharted territory, without a doubt. So writing and language arts is where we're gonna stop next. Um, you will see that every day you will have daily explicit and connected instruction with gramatica, autografía, y desarrollo de vocabulario in addition to what you saw in Mi Libro de Lectura y en Escritura on a, on, a, on a weekly basis or actually on a daily basis, depending on the component, you'll have additional instruction for your students if you need with practice pages and el cuaderno de práctica for each of these components as you're seeing pictured here for the grammar, the spelling, as well as for the expansion of that vocabulary. Aquí tienen a little different from the one that I showed you before. Second grade, yours looks a little different. The, the categories in your cuaderno de práctica, un poquito diferente. In third, fourth, and fifth grade, you'll have la gramática, la fonética, ortografía, vocabulario, y la caligrafía right here. Um, tienen práctica definenciada para la gramática. So uh, differentiated practice uh, for uh, your gramática as well. The writing process, we're gonna take the students through the entire writing process throughout the, two, two, throughout the genre study. First half of the genre study will be, um, I'm sorry, first half of the writing process will be weeks one and two of the genre study. And then weeks three and four, we're gonna take them through the last part of that genre study. Given the short amount of time that you guys are gonna to have to dedicate to Maravillas and the dual instruction, uh, I figured that I'm not going to delve into that a whole lot. Just know that the pages for that writing process are also housed in Mi Libro de Lectura y Escritura. Small group instruction. So uh, you'll have leveled readers. These leveled readers obviously are in line with la comprensión, la estrategia de la, la, la estrategia de comprensión, la destreza, el vocabulario, as well as the science or the social studies alignment. La pregunta esencial también is addressed in these leveled readers. Aquí lo ven en los tres niveles, nivel inicial, a nivel, nivel avanzado. The beauty of it is you're seeing the connection here, right? Between las estrategias, las destrezas, vocabulario, la pregunta esencial. And you're seeing here, if I open these books up, how we've kind of um, differentiated that instruction, the differentiated the read verse on, verse, uh, based on sense and slang, variety, additional facts that are included, uh, in, in, in each of these lessons, but uh, the actual uh, meat and potato, the context of these leveled readers will remain the same regardless of the leveled reader. Sometimes you have them in fiction, sometimes you have them in nonfiction. When it's nonfiction, it will be exactly the same title. When it's fiction, it might not be exactly the same title, but it'll have all of the same connections that I talked to you about down here. You guys also have a leveled reader database. This level, level reader database is going to give you access to tens of thousands of books. These books can be filtered uh, based on género, destreza, keyword, 
The important thing is that if you are a, for example, a fourth grade teacher, but you need a leveled reader at a first grade reading level about detalles clave y idea, idea principal, you could do that. You could filter it, isolate it, and then from there, you can assign it to your student. So you'll have not only what you get in print, but digitally uh, a lot of options for differentiation, all tied, as I was saying, content, essential question, phonics, comprehension skills strategy, uh, whole group, small group, the connection already has been made for you. I think I'm gonna move on from the question and answer. I don't see anything on the chat box. And we're gonna pop into uh, assessments. So evaluaciones, I told you that, that evaluaciones or the evaluation or the uh, assessments that are uh, expected during that week six are already housed in your reading, writing companion or tu libro de lectura en escritura. And it's gonna come in a, in a couple of different ways. Uh, ¿Qué aprendiste es tu repaso? So el repaso espiral está aquí. Todo lo que enseñaste en esa unidad van a tener un repaso aquí en estas Página that are going to have two additional texts that they haven't read in order to uh, evaluate where the students are, to assess where the students are. Another one is going to be amplia lo que aprendiste. So ex, uh, extend your learning. This is what we learned. This is a little bit more of what we learned. And evalua tu progreso. So evaluate your progress or uh, kind of take note of where you are and what you've learned so far. All of these pages are included in mi libro de lectura en escritura. Evaluación, seguimos aquí. Evaluación um, del nivel uh, y diagnóstico, so your placement and diagnostic. You also have running records for maravillas to determine not only levels, instructional levels, but instructional gaps in that learning to figure out where the students are and where those gaps are. And you also have evaluación de progreso. So this is at the end of each genre study you'll have uh, one for, uh, for Maravillas as well. All of those assessments, uh, with the exception of placement and diagnostic and the running record, you'll have intervention. Um, you'll, have, you'll have all of those assessments digitized on the online assessment center. And uh, this will also pour into that data dashboard that I've spoken to you about. All right, so what I'm gonna do is in the time that we have left, I'm gonna toggle into the digital and kind of showcase a little bit for you what I love right now, and this is going to streamline how much or what I show in the digital for Maravillas, is if you guys go into the chat box and from uh, one to five, tell me how much you've used the platform before, if you've used Maravillas or the Wonders uh, platform before, uh, how comfortable are you? How much have you used the uh, digital platform? So I kind of get a gauge whether I start from scratch for you guys or do I just kind of toggle into uh, what's new. So while you do that, I'm gonna go digital. Okay. Brand, veo muchos unos. Uh, uno, 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 never used it. Dos. Uh, Julianne, Julianne, I'm gonna lean on you. You're the only 3.5 here for the most part. Uh, never used Wonders before. Okay, used almost everything. Mariana, I'm gonna lean on you too. All right. So I, I, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm gauging that for the most part, uh, you guys are, are not familiar with the digital dashboard um, for either Wonders or Maravillas. The great thing is, is that um, they both work exactly the same. So, si usaron Wonders o si van a usar Wonders, it's going to work exactly the same as Maravillas. So, voy para un cuarto grado porque that is the lesson that I use to kind of makes more sense when I go into the lesson that I actually used as a, um, as a, a, a uh, model for you, right? So, esto es lo que le llamamos the landing page. This is what we would call the landing page. This is your teacher edition. This is your teacher platform, okay? Up here, you're going to see this maravilla sign. This, um, this little icon is kind of home in anywhere that you are. Once you start clicking around, if you ever want to get back to this landing page, 
you kind of click here. That's your, that's going to take you back here to where all your, your functions are. You're also going to see that up here, tienen unas pestañas or these little tabs. When I hover over these tabs, there's other functionality that's kind of dropping down, right? So I'm going to go through some of these for you so that you understand what's here, but I'm also going to leave you with professional development opportunities where, where you can go in and get additional support and instruction with not only the digital, but the pedagogy as well. So aquí under plan, lo primero que vamos a ver es el, el, el organizador um, de plano. So this is your lesson plan. These are your digitized lesson plans. Um, you can customize these lesson plans by uh, deleting uh, I don't want to do that. Uh, I'm going to put it, lo que le van a decir, en lecciones eliminadas. Vamos, podemos eliminar lecciones. Podemos mover lecciones de un lado a otro. Aquí también tienen what they call options. So you have an optional path. So if I only want to see, uh, I, if I want to see all of the lessons, they're all on right now. As you see, they're all lit. If I turn on this, I only want to see essential questions or what we call core lessons. Then what I could do is I turn this on and what it does, it took away anything that's, that was a review or an extension and I just left the new learning for that week, all right? So you have those options. You could imprimir and essentially what this does, what I've been doing with this planner is actually modifying that electronic presentation that I, that I told you that is put together for you every day. So if I eliminate anything from here, it's also going to eliminate the digital asset that goes along with that, um, that asset. So si elimino at any point in time, puedo ir aquí, lo que dicen las lecciones eliminadas, anything that I removed, or I could restore that uh, lesson planner to its original format. So, eso es lo que el organizador semanal, los estándares semanales están aquí, y el calendario, which I'm going to get to in a second, when I get to actually your class, I'm going to come back and time to talk to you a little bit about this calendar. Recursos, super importante, right? Recursos, under recursos, you're going to find carpeta de recursos, so this is your, your resource library. So, aquí están todos los recursos um, de, eh, de maravillas, whether they are in print or they're, they're in digital, you're going to find them here. These are all the digital resources that we've put together for you in that e-presentation that I've told you that we will put together for you every single day so that you can teach uh, maravillas digitally. Um, you can move these around, as you can see here. I can move these around. I can move them back. I can eliminate things from the presentation, and I could also um, add things to the presentation. So aquí ven que I moved it around, I eliminated, I added. If you want to add anything from your computer, a uh, PDF, a JPEG, a Word document, you have mis archivos aquí that will help you upload anything that you want and then drag that into that presentation. Mis favoritos, what is this all about? At any time, if I find something that's very interesting and I want to kind of get back to it quickly, I just fill up this little uh, star right here. See what happened? It popped up in mis favoritos, so my favorites. If I take it off, it goes away. So let me restaurar, because I am going to use that presentation in a minute to show you the e-presentation. So under me, las carpetas de recurso, you have your uh, e-presentation there, and then you have filtering options to access all of the resources. You can filter these resources by unit and week, and it's just going to show you uh, what's, what is available for that week. A lot of these we have already pulled out for you in that e-presentation. We rest assured that. Um, another place that I really, really want to take you to, to is to a couple of places, right? Tarjetas, super importante, ¿de acuerdo? Las tarjetas de, um, de actividades, las tarjetas de, that's not what I wanted to show you. Las tarjetas de fonética are here. This is your sound spelling cards, uh, especially in a digital environment, right? Las tarjetas de vocabulario están aquí. 
Um, bajo tarjetas también tengo las tarjetas de vocabulario visual. So those visual vocabulary cards, you have them here. You want to assign them to your students, right? I think you might have to do it here. I might have to get to a lesson where I have students. All right. Um, tarjetas que más tenemos. Ya les enseñé todas las tarjetas. Uh, something else that you'll have is uh, el multimedia. So, alguien estaba preguntando, right? Si queremos asignar esto, esto, eh, este video a los estudiantes. Asignar este recurso. Le puedo asignar este recurso a mis estudiantes para que lo puedan ver en la casa. So, I could assign this resource so they have access to it at home. And I could also push it out to Google Classroom if you are in a Google Classroom type environment. Um, Aquí, uh, what else is in the multimedia? La presentación de la semana. También, esa no se puede asignar a los estudiantes, pero you could get to it uh, fairly quickly from here if that's what you choose to do. Otro lugar that I really wanted to take you to is Recursos del Maestro. Here you're going to find la guía del maestro, so all of your TEs, your PDF TDEs while you're waiting for a uh, print components to come in or you want to kind of take a look at that ahead of time, what that's going to look like. All of your uh, lesson, all of your teacher editions or la guía de maestro is here as well. Another super and duper important place that I want to take you to is, um, where is, oh, it's going to be somewhere else. I'm going to take you there in a second. Um, uh, tableros. De ortografía. So if you take a look at this, um, oop, I have to move my little box because I can't get to my pages. So aquí ven ta los tableros de ortografía. I, I feel that are super du duper important with your phonics instruction in Spanish. So I would take a look at that um, resource without a doubt. So all of this is under recursos del maestro. A couple of things. Something else I want to take you to is Desarrollo Profesional. Aquí tienen classroom videos, right? For maravillas. Uh, how to do that in the classroom. What does that look like in the classroom? The instructional routines. Aquí es donde van a encontrar el apéndice para maravillas o las rutinas instruccionales. You're also going to find um, the classroom videos digital help. So this digital help is going to kind of walk you through all of these tabs, but here you're going to have little videos and even downloadable PDFs to walk you through all of the functionality of, of the platform. All right. So I'm going to leave you with Desarrollo Profesional, super, super importante for you to be able to access. Um, Aquí también le voy a dejar aquí. Eh, cuando, once you guys have your classes set up, you're going to find your students uh, or the listing of your classes under the detalles de clases or classroom details. Let me see if I could get to a class that has students so I can kind of show you. And of course, none of them do. Uh, oh, I do. I could, I could show you from here. So this one has one student. You would have all of your students listed here under the detalles de clase. So um, everything that the student is going to need digitally automatically gets delivered to that student dashboard, including the leveled reader. But how do we know what leveled reader to assign the students is under nivel de enseñanza. So here it's going to be an approaching student, a nivel inicial, a nivel o nivel avanzado. So depending on what you say the student is, then we're going to know what, what uh, leveled reader to send to that student. Really, really important is the next part that I'm going to show you. How do we know what unit, what week, and what day are you with instruction? When you first access Maravillas, you first double click on that icon, this is what you're going to see. You're going to be asked to set up a, uh, a classroom, all right? And I'm going to, I did this this morning, so I'm going to call this demo one. All right, so you're gonna name your class or how are you guys gonna do it? Um, you're gonna have, you're gonna use either the McGraw-Hill uh, planner, 
or something that you have from an existing class, which most of you won't because you've never taught a class. Once you have set this up, you're going to go siguiente. It's going to ask you, what is the first day of school? So I'm going to say that the first day of school is Agosto 24. Then it's going to ask me to confirm that. It's going to say, hey, you've selected August 24th as your first day of school. Is that correct? Sí, voy a confirmar que ese es el primer día de la escuela. The next thing that it's going to ask you to do is to let us know what are the, the non-teaching days that are not uh, pre-selected holidays, like New Year's Day, Martin Luther King, President's Day. All of those we know. Those are those ones that are, are, are grayed out. What we do need to know is, hey, over here, we have a teacher work day. Uh, in uh, October, we're going to have another teacher work day here. And uh, we're going to be off uh, for uh, winter break all of these days. So these are going to be non-teaching days. Uh, we're going to have spring break here. These are district-specific days. Not all districts take these holidays the same day. Here's another, there's another teacher work day. Here's another teacher work day. We are good. Vamos a guardar or we're going to save that instruction. Yes, I have, I've, uh, uh, I've done all that. I'm good to go on and proceed. Now what I've done is I have uploaded my content based on that information that I just gave uh, that calendar. After this first setup of that calendar, then if you need to make mon minor modifications, if you have uh, an emergency, I, I don't think you guys get it. Well, you do get hurricanes in Virginia. Hurricanes, field trip days. Um, you're going to come here and you're going to make modifications now to this existing calendar. And this is going to be through agregar días de no enseñanza. I, I could expand a lesson block. I could contract it. But these are going to be minor changes that you're going to make after you've set up that original calendar. If you do not set up your original calendar correct, what is going to be delivered to your students once these two accounts connect is never going to be correct. So given this virtual environment that you guys are teaching in, super important that you take the time to set up this calendar correctly on the onset. Remember that once you have set it up, if you need help with making those minor, minor modifications, Desarrollo Profesional, Digital Help, all right, you're going to find under here, it, uh, the calendar is found under plan right here, right? How to customize the calendar, and here's a printable version of how to do that. So super, super important. All right, I'm going to come back to here. Um, and now I'm going to talk to you about the fact that your Guia de Maestro is digitized over here per day. We're going to move this calendar along with unit, week, and day based on that calendario. Muy importante. Aquí tienen, ya le expliqué los archivos para imprimir uh, semanales or your weekly printables. And the next thing I want to take you to is all of the juegos, all of the games for the week are already pulled out for you. This is that special one that I was talking to you about, that data collecting game that needs to be assigned to your students. So asignar este recurso. At this point, I know I don't have any students. Let me go to, uh, uh, I, would, I would add, um, okay. If, uh, if it was a level, the same way that I'm showing you how to assign this is the same way you assign anything. So if I was assigning a leveled reader, I could turn on this grabador del estudiante, and then the student is going to have a little uh, icon on their side to record themselves reading. Give them instructions. Right? When do I want the students to have access it? Do, when are they not going to have access to it? And then all of your students will be listed here. You can assign it to all, to some, or by level. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to do it. It's going to give me an error message there because I don't have any students to assign it to. Once you have made that assignment, it's going to be administrador de tarea. You're going to find anything that you've assigned to your students here per student. I'm going to come back here. There's one more little place that I want to take you to, uh, which is la presentación de hoy. I showed you through 
Las carpetas de recursos, how you modify this e-presentation, but you could also do it from here. And if you are in a virtual environment, in a Zoom meeting or in a team meeting, and you wanted to teach the lesson that I just uh, taught, which is um, actually it's unit two, week one. Aquí, right? Eso era lo que estábamos, that's, this is the lesson that I kind of talk, talked to you through. So if I wanted to do that virtually, how would I do it? Well, I would launch this e-presentation that I have available to you. Now, all of these things are going to make sense in this presentation. Because you know that this is the video that we show the students to launch that concepto semanal. Sorry, didn't do a share. So we've already seen and I'm not going to take you through it, but here you see, right, we had that video that I showed you, you can slow it down, you can make it faster, class, uh, uh, closed captioning. Here, <clears throat> if I pull this little screen down is everything that I have digital and I'm going to take you through a couple of these. The next thing that we had, remember, was that was the page that the students have in um, Oh, Marina, you wanted to know the present. How do you modify the presentation? Two ways. So I'm going to show you when I come back uh, that you have it right there on the dashboard, or you can modify it through the resource library or la, carpe la carpeta de recursos. Talk to the students, but look what you have here. You have sostener. What was helping that animal sostener? So we're going to have conversations. So you have all your tools to teach from while you're doing your little Zoom session, right? Aquí, if I need to do a little bit more background building, I have this as well. So if I want to build additional background, I could do that there. The next thing I'm going to need is, uh uh, main idea and key detail, right? ¿Cuál era el asunto? Pues, junto con los estudiantes, puedo decir aquí. What was it, right? What were the ad adaptations? I could do this with my students and then I could save my work. And let me lower this a little bit so you could kind of see. I could save my work and it's going to my binder. The students are also going to have a binder as well. And I'm going to show you that. Uh, in a minute how you would access that. The next thing that the students are going to have is a think aloud cloud. Déjame mover esto otra vez. So this think aloud cloud, right? Again, all of my tools are here. I'm going to make this just a tad smaller so you can see it. Lo próximo que tengo, building that building knowledge. Oh, I went the wrong way. I see what I did. All right. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna to have to do a new share here with you guys. Yep. That's the one thing I don't like about Zoom is that you have to keep sharing when you go from tab to tab. Remember that? <laughs> I've learned it the hard way. All right, so mira, familiar, el, la, el libro de lectura y escritura, digitized, mira. I should say, listen. <laughs> All right, adaptation to survive, right? The skunk. What do I have here? Pues tengo un resaltador para poder. Uh, this is definitely a word that I want to that, that uh, highlight here, supervivencia. So this is a feature, this is a survival feature. What was that survival feature? Bueno, vamos a, a ver. Un líquido de su gran, all right. En otro color. So resaltador. Tienen aquí también lápiz para enseñar. Tenemos también uh, sticky notes. So aquí, ¿qué evidencia encontramos, right? Vengo mañana, tengo mi sticky note here to continue. Si es con el estudiante y es, cada estudiante va a tener este libro de lectura y escritura digital. Uh, 
Uh, pueden escribir aquí, right? Y aquí se queda grabado todas sus respuestas. Tienen un también, voy a, a chequear esto un poquito. Tienen un notebook, a digitized notebook. Puedo poner mis respuestas right here. Como estudiante, someto esa respuesta. ¿Cómo yo, como maestra, puedo ver todas las hojas de cada estudiante digital? Pues aquí. Voy a... Yo creo que ninguna de estas maestras tienen estudiante. Escojo mi clase. So in your case, you would click on your class and down here all of your students would appear. You would click on your student's name and you would be able to view that student's... Um, that student, um, that student's page in the Reading Writing Companion, or in in el, in el, um, in el libro de lectura y escritura. I want to take this out of the way because now I can get to it. Aquí ven que sigo moviendo las páginas y todo tiene toda la misma funcionalidad que le expliqué de poder escribir en el libro o de poder respond de responderle a las palabras con el el apoyo a um, auditorio. auditorio. At every, at every step of the way. So, esta es la misma funcionalidad que tiene el libro de lectura y escritura que tiene también el libro de antología. I didn't want to do that. All right. So, voy a, ver, voy a hacer un new share. Aquí con ustedes. All right. Estoy, I'm back to that landing page. Um, so, aquí fue a donde le enseñé todo lo que es el modificar, pueden modificar aquí la presentación. So you could modify the presentation here or through here, uh, which is what I was showing you. Either way, it's going to get you to the same place. Uh, I wanted to show you one more thing in here. Nope. Let me bring this down. New share. Uh, to... Quería enseñarle, and I don't see it here. Ah, uh, here it is. Okay. El vocabulario. El, voca el vocabulario está digital. So, you have digitized support here. El Aquí tengo el ejemplo y por atrás tengo la de definición, el ejemplo y la pregunta. The define example as routine. I go back to the beginning here or from there I can just go to different vocabulary. The same way that you have this to teach from, the students have on their side to continue. Las palabras para aprender. So, una de las palabras con su significado cor correspondiente. Um, Y'all gonna help me here. Gotear, gotear, gotear. Okay, extraordinario. Could it be that easy? No. Oh, look at me. I know Spanish. Fenomenal. So the, you'll see all of the, um, the games, todos los juegos de gramática, de ortografía. You're going to have it here to teach from digitally. The students are also going to have all of these on their, um, on the digital site. And this is not cooperating with me here. All right. So, todos los días, eso va a cambiar según um, your uh, instruction. And how do I know, how, does, how are we going to know what your instruction is? Is going to be based on that calendar that I was talking to you about. Quiero enseñar un poquito antes de terminar cómo luce el, uh, eh, en la parte de los estudiantes. All right. Esta es la parte de los estudiantes. Esto es lo que va a ver los estudiantes. Cualquier cosa que la asignamos, Assigned right here. Okay, mi lista pendiente, mi trabajo, mis exámenes. Um, van a tener el vocabulario. Igual como le demostré en, hace, un, uh, hace un instante, lo tienen ahí. Los juegos. Por, por eso le, le explico que si su calendario está correcto, ustedes no tienen que asignarle nada de esto. Ya eso está aquí, pero claro, si su calendario no está correcto, la, el vocabulario, la estrategia, la destreza, todo eso, no va a estar correcto tampoco. 
So aquí tienen todas las lecturas. Again, none of this has to be assigned. All of this is there. And this is an on-level student because I see an on-level leveled reader. So here you see, and acuérdense que todo, all, el resaltor, la, el lápiz, la nota, your um, ciclo for, to do all the highlighting and underlining and all that, all of that. The same functions that I was showing you with el libro de lectura y escritura, you're going to have here and you're also going to have it with the anthology. Okay, I, want, I need to show you some more anthology. So, um, tengo preguntas, I know I do. And uh, chat. I'm not bringing up the chat because I can't see it right now. Uh, Valerie, can you check the chat for me? I know something is beeping here that I had a, a question that I can't get to. Um, I think Jeremy has addressed all of the questions about the calendars. Um, Julianne is saying under her MaraVS account, she sees the student dashboard in English, I guess, instead of Spanish. Well, this is what you do. You could absolutely do that. So what happens is you're going to go into the teacher edition for Maravillas, but when I click it, look what happens. See what prompt comes up? It says, do you want to continue this platform in Spanish or do you want to translate it in English? Even though it's the Maravillas dashboard, if I click English, it's going to change the headings in, in, and make them in English. So if that's really more of your comfort zone, you could absolutely do that. Or if you want to leave it in Spanish, because that's more where you kind of live in, that's fine too. So the option is there to either do it in English or in Spanish, that same platform giving you, and the students have the same functionality as well. So if they're at home, aquí ves que I could leave it in Spanish or I could translate that to English. And then you're seeing here that all of the headings uh, turn, to, turn to English. All right. Preguntas, and you could actually unmute yourself. We're okay with that. Is there anything else in the digital environment that you would like for me to dig a little deeper or show you a little bit in uh, the couple of minutes that we have left? Mariana, did you get your question answered about the, um, the daily presentation? You still have that question? I'm okay. I would like to see how to create the um, platform for students, how to create those classes, if it's possible. So when you say create classes, do you mean have the students in that teacher dashboard under here, under detalles de clase? Si. Yeah. So Valerie, if you want to hop on to that conversation, I don't know how Harrisburg is approached. You, I know we're doing kind of look for everyone, but if you want to address that? I'm not sure, honestly, about that. I have to follow up on that. Okay. So, Mariana, we're going to get you the answer. There's a couple of different ways that this could be done. It could be done where McGraw actually uploads your students into your... Um, into your classroom. So when once you go and you set up your calendar, when you get into your teacher dashboard, your students are gonna be sitting here. Or there's another route where it's kind of a manual creating of the class. So once you have the class created, aquí vamos entonces agregando los estudiantes. You would, you would add and create your own class. There's a little bit of a process. So once we've decided which way you guys are gonna go, we're gonna to continue to give you the support that you need to either create your classes through a bulk upload or you fill out it's actually like an excel sheet that you upload and then you'll have all your students to be able to bring them into your classroom so two different approaches depending on which way your district is going but valerie will follow up on which way harrisburg has gone as far as classroom creation but good question good question thank you so much for that and jeremy just clarified that as far as going through clever so Clever is your learning management system. So does that mean that, I'm not gonna assume, but uh, that the students are gonna be there and they're gonna be up, bulk uploaded for the Maravillas teachers. Without a doubt, that's something that we wanna um, come 
back and, and verify to ensure. Because if they don't have the students upload it there, or if they don't know how to do it, or if we don't do it for them, then the virtual, this connection between the teacher dashboard and the student dashboard isn't gonna happen. Any other questions before we move away? Unmute yourself, be brave like Mariana, and ask those questions. Any other questions before we part ways? All right. Uh, Jeremy, any clarification um, as far as your concern? No, I think we've, we've covered a lot of ground here today and uh, this has been great information. Uh, I certainly have learned a lot and um, really appreciate you being here, not only to share this with us, but also to have uh, your Spanish knowledge come into play and that, that means a lot to Harrisonburg and to our, our division. So thank you everyone for attending and thank you um, for presenting uh, Lisette and, and um, I don't have anything else. Perfect. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I look forward to continuing to support Harrisburg in their amazing implementation of Maravillas. That being said, um, I want to thank Valerie again also for the opportunity and it is being recorded. I know that was one of the questions that we had. So as soon as I get that recording, I'll send all the session recordings to Valerie and then she will send it um, up the pike so that you guys have access to the recording of all the sessions that we've done today. Thank you so much, and I, um, I, without a doubt, wish you guys the best of luck as you continue uh, with your uh, implementation and your launching of Maravillas. Thank you so much. Gracias. Thank you.